Today we're going to do a larger overview type comparison, looking at more than 20 different strollers with reversible seats that we've previously reviewed, divided into three categories, ranging from small models intended for travel, urban use or keeping in the trunk, all the way up to the largest models, which are generally sturdier, better off-road, and may come with a tandem option. And starting at the bottom of the size scale, I'm going to skip over the Boogaboo Ant since it's been discontinued, though which was, for its time, the only real attempt to create a legitimately ultra-compact sized reversible seat model, and instead begin with the Cybex Easy S Twist, which, despite perhaps being appealing for its small size and lightweight, is unfortunately too weak for its overly complex design in my opinion with fragile mechanisms both in the seat frame and the chassis, and having too many separate, thin bars weakly riveted together at its hinges and connection points, all of which are likely to lead to symmetry issues down the road, and are problems that, in my opinion, result from the twist occupying a sort of grey area on the size scale, being too large to pass as cabin luggage, but also too small and weak to stand up to the rigours of daily use and as such, leave the model without any real competitive advantage in comparison to other smaller sized reversible seat models on the wider market. Alright, with the twist aside, the rest of the smaller sized reversible seat models we'll be looking at in this video are a bit stronger, and our next stroller then is the Nuna Triv, one of the best models in my opinion for the specific role of keeping in the trunk and using for shorter shopping trips and the like in smoother, preferably paved places. Because it's relatively light, has a super comfortable fold, can fold with a seat reversed, and also has a high position seat for a model of this sort in any case, meaning easier access to the shopping basket. The Triv does have a few downsides as well, of course, in that the back end feels a bit unstable, a result of its narrow construction, as well as over malleable suspension, in that the overall construction of the chassis is a bit slight without the reinforcement needed to handle all day, everyday use over a longer period without a car, and in that you also need to keep the front wheels properly lubricated to prevent swiveling issues. The recently released Triv Next has at least solved the rear frame instability though which is the most serious issue in my opinion, and if you're looking at the Triv, I would then recommend the Triv Next as the better purchase. Next up is the Boogaboo B6, a long-standing classic, where the main negatives of the model are its relatively fragile plastic seat frame, and that its somewhat overcomplicated internal mechanisms can sometimes get hung up, making basic use functions fiddly to accomplish, stuff like reversing and reclining the seat, and folding the model down or up especially if these mechanisms aren't lubricated properly. On the positive side, the B has a decently sturdy chassis beyond the seat frame, is foldable with both the seat facing forwards or reversed, and, while it's not exactly my favourite small sized reversible seat model out there, it does have a long history of loving fans behind it, enough of them that if you're interested in the B, then it's worth having a look for yourself to see if the negatives that I mentioned are maybe less of a factor for you. Pushing forwards, we get to the Cybex Mios, a very finely and efficiently designed stroller with an easier one-handed one-piece fold than you get with the B and good structural strength in comparison to the model's size and weight. On the negative side, it's a bit less terrain capable than either the Triv or the B, it can't fold down as a single piece with the seat reversed, and it's definitely on the pricier side of the market. But if you don't live somewhere too rough, a well-maintained urban environment being ideal, and you like the style of the model enough to pay its price, then it's a very nice, almost artisanal stroller to have. As a side note here, Cybex also offers a model called the Melio, which, despite having been toted as a cheaper version of the same design, is actually quite different from the Mios, being significantly weaker, and will neither provide the same sort of user experience in terms of stability or comfort that you get with the Mios, nor is it really a model that I'd recommend considering at all. And last up for our smaller size models today then, is the Jules Hub Plus, which is significantly stronger than all of the other models we've covered so far, and has larger sized rear wheels that provide more stability and better heft for handling obstacles. Negatives on the hub are minimal, being really only that the model's a bit heavy and that the adjustable leg rest is a bit on the small side for older toddlers, though this could really be said of the Triv and Mios as well. While the pluses of choosing this stroller are that it's solid and dependable, has good terrain capability relative to its size, folds quite compactly as a single piece with a seat either forwards or reversed, and has a shoulder strap to be carried when needed. 
and the Hub Plus, then, is most ideal, in my opinion, for city living, for parents who tend to get around without a car and need a smaller size stroller that can handle broken sidewalks, gravel, or lighter cobblestones without wearing down too quickly as a result of regular use in such conditions. All right, next up are the mid-sized models, where the first stroller I'd like to talk about is the Hub Plus's big brother, the Day Plus, whose chassis is in many ways identically designed, though in larger proportions, and where the only real negative, in my opinion, is that its terrain capability is a tad limited for its weight, though note that the model is capable of handling easier cobblestones, gravel, and smoother park terrain just fine, and can also be fitted with terrain wheels to help with snow while the main positive of the Day Plus is a durability inherent in its design, which emphasizes simple mechanisms to limit the number of smaller internal components that might cause problems down the line, strong materials, meaning a bit more metal than a lot of brands use, and good structural reinforcement. And the Day Plus, then, is a model worth considering if your lifestyle will involve all-day, everyday use in an urban or light suburban setting, and your primary purchasing concern is to get a stroller that will hold up well over time. Next up is the Nuna Mix Next, a mid-size model with a bit better than average terrain capability, but which also unfortunately suffers from a few issues, in that the model flexes and bends too much when driving, the result of a pair of skinny vertical struts in the center of the chassis in combination with very malleable suspension, that when folded down the model's a bit clunky and cumbersome to lift, and lastly, and most importantly, in that the model's seat unit has a weak canopy, a weak and short leg rest, and seat dimensions tight enough that I've actually had multiple patrons at this point who've joined up just to find a replacement model because their children have outgrown the mix of seat in under two years. And thus, despite the continuing hype out there for this model, the mix next is one that I personally would recommend avoiding for any lifestyle conditions. Moving forwards, we get to the Stoke Explory X, whose main positives are its high position seat, that it's quite solid mechanically, despite being relatively complex internally, and the fact that Stoka goes a bit above and beyond in terms of after-sales service. The eccentric design of the Explory, though, also unfortunately brings with it a few negatives, in that the model's a bit tough to fold, both in terms of the number of steps required, as well as finger strength, that it has pretty poor carrying capacity, that it more or less entirely lacks suspension, and lastly, that it's both heavy for its limited terrain capabilities and pretty big to handle when folded. All that being said, however, since it is structurally sound, for those who really like the model's high seat and unique look, and who also live in a relatively smooth environment, it would be a lie to say that the Explory doesn't actually function fine for what it is, and there's really no reason to suggest not buying it entirely if you're really into it. Next up is the Boogaboo Fox 3, which has well above average driving characteristics for its weight, both in terms of steering and terrain capability, and a lot of folding options, in its ability to fold down into a single standing piece with the seat both forwards and reversed, as well as with the bassinet, and to also be unfolded from the standing position without needing to bend all the way down to the ground. The chief negative of the Fox is that, mechanically, these extra functions make the model's central folding mechanism quite complex, which can have a negative impact on the stroller's longevity if you don't treat it a bit carefully. But despite this though, there are simply too many advantages that the model offers in terms of ease of use, child comfort, and terrain capability for the Fox not to be a model worth considering for a lot of parents, especially if you live in a big city, tend to get around without a car, and need something that can handle a little off-roading as well, for hitting parks or making your way over rougher cobblestones. While we're on the subject of the Fox, I'd like to also briefly mention the Lynx, which is often looked at as a budget version of the same design, but is actually quite different and is a model that I wouldn't recommend quite as highly. Moving on, we get to the Cybex Priam, which, like the Mios, is a rather finely designed, though arguably overpriced model, with its chief negatives being a tendency for the chassis to loosen up a bit quicker than with several comparable top-end models, and also Cybex's refusal to back up the model's high price with an extended guarantee. That being said, however, in terms of both comfort and mechanics, as well as terrain capability for handling rougher urban conditions, the Priam is a decent stroller, so if you have the money to blow, go for it. But just know that it's not extra reinforced and durable like Upababy or Jewel strollers, so there is the chance you'll wind up missing that guarantee. 
Before moving on, I'd like to briefly discuss three additional Cybex models that are related to the preamp, but that I don't recommend buying. First of which is the e -preamp, which I've never been entirely sold on since it's both even more expensive and also the self-driving wheels are not really that relevant for most people in my opinion, other than for those who really need to reduce the weight of pushing the model for medical reasons, and then it's a good buy of course. Second is the Balios, which serves essentially the same sort of lifestyle needs as the preamp for half the price, but which also unfortunately has significantly reduced durability with several rivet points on the chassis lacking proper reinforcement, having weaker internal mechanisms, and also somewhat inadequate cross support. And lastly is the Talos, which is essentially identical to the Balios other than having larger wheels, and which thus also fails in terms of durability while also having the added problem that those larger wheels both add extra weight to the chassis and also encourage users to drive the model over even rougher terrain, which accelerates wear. In contrast to the Talos, our next model, however, does have some legitimate terrain capability, and that's the Bumble Ride Era, whose positives include a pleasantly long adjustable leg rest, the ability to fold relatively small as a single piece, and extra large front wheels for off-roading. While the main negatives of the model are its somewhat weak handle, which is exacerbated by the fact that the Era is also a bit front heavy, a somewhat inaccessible shopping basket, and air filled wheels that really should have been fit with extra tough tires, considering the terrain that the model is likely to be purchased for. Yet despite these negatives though, the selection of truly terrain capable reversible seat models has been narrowing for a few years now, and the Era may still be a model worth considering if you need an off-road capable stroller that can also fold down relatively small for better fitting in the trunk. And last up then for the mid-sized models today is the Upa Baby Cruise V2, one of my favorite strollers at the current moment due to a simple and sturdy chassis design with awesome suspension, an extra large and accessible shopping basket, and also in that it's both easy to fold and relatively compact when folded down as a single piece. Terrain-wise, the Cruise V2 is roughly on par with the Day Plus, being primarily designed for urban and light suburban use, though note that it manages this with both better suspension and less overall weight. And on the whole then, the only couple of nitpicks that I have with the model are that the brake system and swivel locks are a bit more complex internally than I'd like them to be, while besides this, the Cruise V2 is then an ideal model for both cities and smoother suburbs, great for hauling groceries and day trip gear, and folds decently small enough as to not take up too much room at home or in the trunk. Alright, moving on then to the larger sized models, we'll begin with the Vista V2, whose structure is essentially identical to the Cruise V2's, but which provides more terrain capability from its larger wheels, has an even bigger shopping basket, has the ability to raise up the seat with adapters, which is nice for making both your baby and that shopping basket more accessible, and which also has the ability to fit a tandem seat. As with the Cruise, the negatives on the model are minimal, being only the same complexity in the brake system and swivel locks, and while I'd like to stress that the Vista in tandem configuration is not my favorite two-child solution by far, as a single-child stroller with tandem capability just as an added bonus, it's hard to beat for a combination of durability, decent terrain capability, and excellent storage capacity, making it a great choice for lifestyles without a car where you need your stroller to double as a base of operations throughout the day, or for people with some degree of off-roading needs who also want a reversible seat. Next up is the Maxi Cousy Lila XP, which is another one of those models that I unfortunately feel is not really worth buying at all as, despite having decent terrain capability, the Leela's price is simply not low enough to justify its negatives, which include an unpleasantly weak mechanism for adjusting the seat's recline, a complicated sliding system for folding and unfolding the chassis that's prone to alignment problems from wear, a two-pedal wire-based brake setup without an adjustment screw to allow for changing tension in the wire over time, bad angling on the rear suspension, a center of weight that's a bit too far forwards, making tipping heavier, and poor tire quality, at least on the version we looked at, though there is some variation here. And in the end, while the Leela XP isn't all in all a bad model, there are definitely weaker strollers out there, its pricing closer to the top of the market makes it not worth it in my opinion. Moving on is the Nuna Demigro, a simply and sturdily constructed tandem model which, like the Vista, makes a great base of operations type stroller for all day use without a car, especially with the seat raised up to give better access to the model's spacious shopping basket. 
The Demigro is also a rear-loading tandem model, meaning that, though you lose storage capacity in two-child mode, the stroller remains quite easy to drive despite the extra kid, which is not true of front-loading tandems, as that forward weight makes them quite heavy to steer and tip. On the negative side, both the seat and front wheels on the Demigro are a tad on the small side for a model of this sort, though neither by a serious margin, mind you, and the Demigro can both comfortably seat a child at least until up around three, and also manages to tackle rougher urban conditions, including cobblestones, just fine, making it another strong choice for urban living without a car. Up next is the Cybex Gazelle, a tandem model whose chief selling points seem to be a lower price than a lot of the competition, and the oft-used advertising pictures of its shopping configuration, which create an illusion of greatly increasing its carrying capacity. The Gazelle has a couple of positives, in that the core of the chassis is decently sturdy, and the model's seat frames use Cybex's lie-flat capable Lux design but these are unfortunately outweighed by the model's negatives in my opinion, where the Gazelle is quite heavy and cumbersome to maneuver due to its length, doesn't function that well off-road, is a bit of a nightmare to tip, as one must do when going up a curb for example, has seats that are a bit too short, and has rickety, rattly peripheral elements and wheels, and thus, despite clocking in at a bit lower than top-end tandems, the Gazelle is yet again another of those models that I'd recommend steering clear of. Next up is the Thule Sleek, where the chief positives are the model's decently sized seat and its sturdy, lightweight chassis, while on the negative side, the Sleek's a bit heavy to tip, its suspension is a bit too stiff to provide much shock absorption, and the model's two-child configurations are a tad more claustrophobic than with a lot of other tandem strollers. All that being said, however, the Sleek is still a step up from the Gazelle in terms of manufacturing quality in my opinion and with its decent sized seat, might still be worth considering if you need a somewhat terrain-capable reversible seat model, live somewhere in the world with a limited purchasing selection, and, really, just ignore the tandem function altogether and buy it as a single-child stroller. Pushing forwards, our next model is the Baby Jogger City Select 2, which is not in any way among my top picks for a tandem model, but which does take the cake in terms of quality for price in my opinion, with a decently sturdy chassis, seat dimensions roughly on par with the Demigro, and a decent weight in comparison to the wider tandem market. At the same time, it isn't all that terrain capable, its mechanisms are a bit tough on the fingers, and its length makes it a little uncomfortable to maneuver and tip. But then, for a price less than the Gazelles, but with better manufacturing quality, the Select 2 may be a decent option to consider if your primary interest in a tandem stroller is for the two-child mode, and price is the key factor in your purchasing decision. Alright, we're getting towards the end of this video, and my last tandem model for the day is the Silvercross Wave, a rather heavy stroller which, like the Gazelle, suffers a bit from the combination of being quite long, having rather small seats, and not providing the terrain capability needed to justify its weight. The singular positive that I would give to the Wave is that a bit extra has gone into the textiles on the seats and bassinets, making them feel more luxurious than average. But beyond this, the Wave, unfortunately, is also heavy, stiff, creaky, and bulky, both to drive as well as to lift and pack away, and also suffers from a variety of poor mechanical choices including a somewhat rickety handle, weak locking mechanisms for the fold, a problematically designed brake system, insufficient suspension, and front swivel wheels that are likely to develop wobbling problems down the road, and is thus, all in all, simply not worth the price that the model is generally sold for in my opinion. And last up today then, is the only two-child expandable model here that's not an inline tandem stroller, but which is light years more comfortable to use for two children than any of the tandem models that we've covered. And that's the Boogaboo Donkey 3, whose main positives are the equal access it provides to two children simultaneously, the ability to shrink the model horizontally into mono mode, easy swapping between bassinets, car seats, and the model's bucket seats, and its amazing terrain capability. In terms of longevity, the donkey is sturdy enough to be pushed pretty hard for its first couple years of use, but definitely needs to be handled a bit more carefully if you want it to last longer than this, being particularly susceptible to loosening as a result of the many telescopic points used for horizontal expansion. But that being said, the donkey is my go-to model for parents who need a two-child stroller for all-day, everyday use without a car for any prolonged period of time, regardless of where you live. 
In any case, we hope you found this video interesting. And if you did, please subscribe or even hit the donate button if you're so inclined, as this sort of support helps us to continue making videos in the future. If you'd like to know more about any of these models, we have standalone reviews for all of them that go into a lot more detail, and links have been added in the description. In addition, if you are currently shopping for a stroller, we have a buyer's guide on our Patreon page which lists a wide range of models that we recommend, with a lot of technical and lifestyle related information. You can find it by following the link in the description as well. Thank you.